It was a Thursday. I remember, because Thursdays meant spaghetti. Dad had this rule. Every Thursday, we had to sit down for spaghetti. It was our tradition. But that Thursday was different. Mom left that day, and everything changed. Dad came in later than usual. I was already at the table, staring at my cold spaghetti, wondering why he was late. When he walked in, I could tell something was wrong. His face was red, like he'd been crying. I'd never seen him like this before. Anna, he said, his voice trembling. We need to talk. I felt a knot in my stomach, like something terrible was about to happen. What's wrong? Dad, I asked, trying to sound brave, but my voice was shaky. He didn't sit. Instead, he paced back and forth, searching for the right words. Finally, he stopped, looked at me, and said, It's your mom. She's not coming back. I didn't understand. Not coming back from where? It was speck at night. Where else would she be? She left us for someone else, Dad said. The words hit me hard. Mom was gone. Why? Dad's voice broke. I don't understand it either, but she made her choice and we have to deal with it. I was angry and sad, and I couldn't even know what to feel. Did she even say goodbye? Did she stop loving us? Dad sat next to me and hopped me. I'm sure she loves you, Anna, but sometimes people make choices that hurt others. It's not fair, but it happens. I pushed him away, feeling a surge of anger. I hate her, I yelled, not really meaning it, but maybe I did. Dad sighed and wiped his eyes. I know, it's okay to be mad, but we'll get through this together. The rest of the evening was a blur. I didn't eat my spaghetti. How could I? Spaghetti night was ruined, and so was everything else. That night, I lay in bed, staring at the ceiling, thinking about Mom. Why did she leave? Didn't she care about us? Dad was hurting. I was hurting. It felt like she didn't care at all. It was the first time I realized people you trust can break your heart. As much as I wanted to hate her, I just wanted to understand why she left and if she ever thought about us but those questions could wait. For now, I had to keep moving forward with Dad by my side. Then Sarah came into our lives, like an unexpected twist that turns out to be a great addition. When Dad first told me about Sarah, I was skeptical. We were doing dishes, and he seemed unusually nervous. Anna, I've been seeing someone. He blurted out, almost dropping a plate. I froze, soap dripping from my hand. What? Who? I didn't know whether to feel angry or curious. Her name's Sarah. She's really wonderful, Anna. I think you'll like her, he said, avoiding my gaze. I didn't say much, just nodded and continued with the dishes, but inside I was a mess of thoughts. Another woman. Was she trying to replace Mom? I wasn't ready for that. When I met Sarah for the first time, I was guarded. She came over for dinner, clearly nervous, which made me feel a bit better. She wasn't acting like she owned the place. Hi, Anna. I've heard so much about you, she said, offering a genuinely warm smile. Yes, all good things, I hope, I replied, trying to sound tough but probably coming off as awkward. The conversation was a bit stilted at first. Dad tried to fill the silence, but then Sarah mentioned a band I loved too. That broke the ice and soon we were chatting like old friends. Sarah quickly became a part of our lives. She moved in a few months later, and it just felt right, like she was meant to be there. One day, after Sarah had moved in, I came home fuming from school. Kids had been making fun of me for not having a mom, and I'd had enough. I slammed the door and threw my backpack against the wall. Sarah rushed in, looking concerned. What's wrong, Anna? She asked, kneeling to be on my level. Nothing. Just leave me alone. I snapped, not really meaning it. I was just so mad. Sarah didn't back off. It doesn't look like nothing. Want to talk about it? I hesitated, then let it all out. The kids at school, missing mom, and the constant anger. 
Sarah just listened, her expression gentle. When I finished, she hugged me, not trying to replace mom, but showing she was there for me. That meant everything. Anna, I'll never try to take your mom's place, but I'm here for you, as a friend, as family, whatever you need. I nodded, wiping away tears. Thanks, I said softly. From then on, Sarah wasn't just dad's girlfriend or the woman living with us. She became part of our family. She helped me with homework, listened to my teenage rants, and even taught me how to apply eyeliner properly. She brought laughter and love into our home, things I didn't realize I'd missed so much. One evening, while we were watching a movie, I saw Sarah and Dad laughing on the couch. It hit me how much things had changed and improved. Thanks, Sarah. I whispered, hoping she'd hear me. For what? She asked, turning with a smile. For everything, I said, meaning it. Sarah squeezed my hand and turned back to the movie. That moment made it clear. Sarah was family. College was a whole new world. I moved on to campus studying economics because it seemed like a solid choice. I called Dad and Sarah every Sunday, sharing both the mundane and exciting details. They were my rock, my safety net amid the whirlwind of new experiences. One evening, while cramming for midterms with my roommate Mary, my phone rang. Seeing Dad's ID, I expected a routine check-in. Hey, Dad, what's up? I answered, trying to sound calm. But it wasn't Dad. Anna, you need to come home. It's your dad. He had a heart attack. My world stopped. What? Is he okay? Tell me he's okay. Sarah's silence was too long. He didn't make it, Anna. I'm so sorry. The phone nearly slipped from my hand. Mary's concerned face blurred as I choked out. Dad's gone. The next few days were a blur of tears, travel, and awful coffee. The funeral felt surreal, like I was watching someone else's life fall apart. Dad was gone. Just like that. No warnings, no goodbyes. After the crowd of sympathetic faces had left, Sarah and I sat in the living room, surrounded by silence. I can't believe he's gone. I whispered, the words heavy. Sarah put her arm around me. I know, kiddo. It's going to be tough, but we'll get through this together. How, Sarah? How do we do this without him? I asked, tears coming again. We remember him. We keep living because that's what he would have wanted. And we take care of each other. Going back to college was hard. I wanted to drop out, come home, and stay with Sarah in the big, empty house. But I knew that wasn't what Dad would have wanted. Go back, Anna, Sarah said when I mentioned it. Finish what you started. Make your dad proud. But what about you? I asked, feeling conflicted. I'll be fine. I'll be here when you come back. Always. So I went back. Mary, bless her, had turned our dorm room into a comforting haven when I returned. She didn't say much, just hugged me tight and let me be. It was exactly what I needed. Classes were a struggle. I couldn't focus and my motivation was low. I remember sitting in a lecture staring blankly at the professor as their words felt like a foreign language. After class, my professor, Dr. Henderson, pulled me aside. Anna, is everything okay? Your participation has dropped significantly. I shrugged, the weight of grief making it hard to explain. It's my dad. He passed away. Dr. Henderson's expression softened. I'm so sorry to hear that, Anna. If you need anything extensions or someone to talk to, my door is always open. Thanks, I mumbled, grateful but too numb to really feel it. That's how it went for a while, just going through the motions, barely keeping afloat. But slowly, with support from Sarah, Mary, and even Dr. Henderson, things started to get a bit easier. Not better, but less impossible. By the end of the semester, I'd managed to pull my grades up and secure a decent GPA. It felt hollow without Dad to celebrate with me, but I knew he would be proud somewhere, and that thought gave me strength. Time flew by, and at 27, I had my own place and a career that was going somewhere. Bosses liked me, work was steady, and I felt like I had a handle on things. 
On a rare Saturday with no plans, I was ready to chill and binge watch something. Then the doorbell rang, cuffing through my lazy morning. I wasn't expecting anyone, probably a forgotten package or a neighbor starting small talk I wasn't in the mood for. When I opened the door, I was shocked to see my mom standing there. She looked different. Years and hard living had left her worn and rough around the edges. What are you doing here? I asked, my shock evident. Her eyes filled with tears, and she looked like she was about to break down. I wanted to see you, Anna. It's been too long. Too long was an understatement. Years of silence, and now she shows up. Why now, after all this time? My voice was sharp, and I wasn't about to soften it. She wiped her eyes, taking a shaky breath. I've always wanted to fix things between us. Your dad and Sarah wouldn't let me get close. That made me frown. Come on, you expect me to believe that. Why didn't you reach out when I turned 18? I wasn't under their control then. Her excuse seemed rehearsed. I was sick, Anna. Really sick. It took me a long time to get better, and when I did, I knew I had to try to connect with you, even if it was late. The conversation felt awkward and messy. Part of me wanted to slam the door, but another part, one I wasn't ready to admit, wanted to hear her out. Maybe it was curiosity, maybe something else. We talked, or rather, danced around the years of silence, each of us avoiding the real issues. Then, without warning, she said she had to go. Just like that, she left, leaving me with a storm of thoughts and no clear answers. The door clicked shut behind her, and I stood there, feeling a confusing mix of anger, sadness, and other emotions I couldn't name. She had her chance to explain, and all I got were excuses. Her visit had opened something I thought I had buried long ago. After Mom's unexpected visit, my head was a mess, buzzing with a million thoughts and no clear answers. I needed some clarity. There was only one person who could offer that. Sarah. I drove over to her place, the one she had moved into after Dad passed. It was a cozy house, filled with warmth and memories, a sharp contrast to the confusion I felt. I knocked on the door, and Sarah answered with her usual welcoming smile, though it faltered when she saw my face. Anna, what's wrong? She asked, letting me in. I didn't even know where to start. Mom showed up at my place today. I said as we settled in her living room, each with a cup of tea. Sarah's eyebrows shot up. Your mom. After all these years. Yes, and she had a lot to say, mostly excuses. I sipped my tea, struggling to meet her gaze. What did she say? Sarah asked, her voice calm but tense. She said you and dad kept her away from me, that she was sick and couldn't reach out until now. The words tasted bitter as I relayed Mom's version of events. Sarah shook her head in disbelief. Anna, that's not true. You know that. Your dad and I never stopped her from reaching out. She made her own choices. I knew it deep down, but hearing Mom's story stirred up doubts. Part of me wanted to believe there was a good reason for her leaving. Sarah reached over and squeezed my hand. It's natural to want to find some good in her reasons, but you can't let her rewrite the past. You know what happened? Yeah, I do, I sighed, feeling a bit foolish. She also said she was sick. We never knew if she was, Sarah said gently. But even if she was, it doesn't change the years of silence. It doesn't excuse everything. Slowly, clarity began to cut through my emotional fog. Sarah had a way of making things make sense. She also talked about wanting to start over, to have some kind of relationship. Sarah's expression grew cautious. Anna, people don't change overnight. If you let her back in, be careful. Protect yourself. Her words were a reminder of the pain that had taken so long to heal. I don't even know if I want her in my life, I admitted, feeling overwhelmed. Whatever you decide, I'm here for you. Just remember who she was and who she's been all these years. Sarah's advice was like a lighthouse guiding me through stormy seas. I will. Thanks, Sarah. I meant it. Her perspective was a tether to reality when I felt adrift. After Mom's visit, 
she started coming by more often. At first, it was nice, catching up, exploring the mother-daughter bond we never had. But then things changed. It wasn't just coffee and small talk anymore. She started hinting at needing money, first for a doctor's bill, then for some rehab she claimed was for her illness recovery. Each time, she piled on the affection, something I wasn't used to from her. Despite Sarah's earlier warnings, I found myself unable to say no. Maybe it was guilt or maybe I just missed that maternal affection. Then she hit me with a real shocker. Out of nowhere, she said, I found this great apartment right next to yours. Wouldn't it be wonderful to be neighbors? I thought it sounded nice until she dropped the bombshell. She wanted me to pay the entire year's rent up front, which came to 24 grand. I nearly choked on my coffee. You what? That's a lot of money, mom. She played the hurt card like a pro. I thought you'd want to help your mother, she said, sounding wounded. I do, but that's a lot. I need to think about it. I stammered, feeling blindsided. She didn't take it well, got all huffy, and stormed out. I felt like the worst daughter ever for not immediately handing over the cash. I needed advice from someone who wasn't involved. Naturally, I called Sarah. Hey, I said, jumping straight in. Mom asked me to pay a year's rent for her minus 24k. What do I do? Sarah's response was immediate, filled with concern and frustration. Anna, are you serious? After everything, you're considering this. I sighed, running a hand through my hair. I don't know, Sarah. She's my mom. She's also the woman who left you and your dad. You don't owe her anything, Sarah said sharply. Her words stung, but she was right. Still, I couldn't shake the desire for a real relationship with my mom, even if it meant paying for it. Against my better judgment, I agreed to mom's request. But I wasn't completely naive. I made sure my name was on the lease, just in case things went wrong. When I told Sarah, there was a long silence on the line. Anna, I hope you know what you're doing, she finally said, her voice heavy with concern. Yeah, me too, I replied, though I had no idea what I was doing. But there was no turning back now. I'd made my choice and hoped it wouldn't come back to haunt me. A week after the apartment fiasco, I decided a surprise housewarming might help smooth things over. Maybe it would show mom that I was making an effort to bridge the gap between us. So there I was, outside her door, ready to surprise her, when I overheard something that stopped me cold. Mom was inside, boasting to her new friends about how she tricked me into paying for her apartment for a year. Can you believe it? My daughter paid for this place for a whole year. She's as foolish as her old man was, she laughed. My heart dropped. I felt a rush of disbelief and anger, but I pushed the door open and walked in before I could second-guess myself. Inside, the scene was exactly what I expected. Drunken strangers cluttering the living room, with mom holding court. The room went silent as everyone turned to look at me, the target of her mockery. Mom's surprise quickly turned to a sneer. Look who decided to show up. Come to see what your generosity bought. Her friends chuckled, treating me like a punchline. I was boiling inside but kept my composure, forcing a smile. Actually, I came to share some interesting news about the rent. I said, Mom's smirk grew wider. Oh yeah? What's that? I pulled out the rental agreement, holding it up like a victory flag. I only paid for a month, not a year. The room went silent. Mom's face went pale as she realized her deception had been exposed. Her friends began to retreat, confusion replacing their laughter. Without waiting for her to come up with an excuse, I turned and walked out, leaving her to deal with the fallout. As I left, her angry shouts followed me, but they didn't bother me. I felt lighter, as if I'd finally shed a burden I hadn't fully recognized. After confronting Mom, I headed straight to Sarah. I needed her perspective on the chaos. Before I could say much, Mom stormed in, threatening to sue me for every penny I had and demanding lifelong support as if years of neglect could be erased with money. Sarah, instead of getting angry, just laughed. One of those incredulous laughs. 
You're going to sue? Really? Her amazement was clear. Mom kept shouting about rights and money until Sarah pulled out a stack of papers from a drawer. These rights, Sarah asked, showing documents that proved Mom had abandoned her parental duties long ago. Mom's face went from fiery to deflate in an instant. Two weeks later, news broke that Mom had been kicked out of the apartment. She refused to leave, and the cops had to get involved. She showed up at my place next, banging on the door and making threats through it. I'd had enough. I yelled back, knock it off, or I'm calling the cops. It worked. She left and hasn't shown up since. Sitting there after she'd gone, I realized I was finally free from her threats, manipulations, and the weight of her expectations. For the first time in a long time, I could breathe easy.